This video is a continuation in our connective tissue series and it will be covering fibrous cartilage which wraps it up for our three different types of cartilage. Before we move into the details of fibrous cartilage, let's remember what unites all of our connective tissues. All of our connective tissues have a mesenchymal origin and so they have mesenchymal stem cells. All of our connective tissues have two major components, cells and extracellular matrix. Our extracellular matrix itself can be divided into two components, ground substance, which is our fluid component, and our extracellular fibers. We have three different types of extracellular fibers. We have collagen fibers, which provide strength in the orientation of the fiber. We have elastic fibers, which provide stretch and recoil. And lastly, we have reticular fibers, which create a branching framework to provide support in many directions. Very frequently, our collagen fibers stain pink, our elastic fibers stain a dark purple, and our reticular fibers stain dark brown or black, or light blue. In this video, we will be covering fibrous cartilage, also called fibrocartilage, and so let's take a closer look at that tissue. Before we talk about fibrous cartilage in specific, let's talk about cartilage in general. All cartilage is going to have lacunae that house our chondrocytes. So all of our cartilage is going to have these spaces and inside of those spaces we will see our chondrocytes. So the space or the structure is our lacuna and the cell inside of that structure is our chondrocyte. So we can see lacunae in our fibrocartilage. They are smaller than we may see in hyaline and elastic cartilage, but our lacunae are there. So that's great as a general description for cartilage. Now let's take a look at what we generally see in fibrocartilage or fibrous cartilage. Well, we're gonna see that our lacunae house chondrocytes. So we see those spaces within our tissue and we see chondrocytes inside those spaces. What we also see in fibrous cartilage is we see fibers running in between our lacunae. Now this is similar to elastic cartilage, except the fibers in elastic cartilage are elastic fibers, and the fibers in fibrocartilage are collagen. So if we take a look at our picture, we clearly see fibrous cartilage running in between our lacunae, and this fibrous cartilage may take many different directions. So you may see swirls that kind of run through the cartilage in different directions. So with that generalized description, we gave ourselves our specialized cell type, which is a chondrocyte. Anytime you think about cartilage, you should think chondro, and anytime you see chondro, you should think cartilage. Our specialized cell type here is primarily pink, so our primary specialized fiber type is collagen. Now let's think about our locations and our functions. Locations for fibrous cartilage include our symphyses, and we've got two major types of symphyses. We have our pubic symphysis, where our two sides of our pelvic girdle attached to each other in the front, and we have our intervertebral discs between our vertebrae. We also see fibrous cartilage in the menisci that we find in our knees. Menisci with an I on the end is plural for meniscus, which is a, a U-S on the end instead of the I. So at our pubic symphysis and our intervertebral discs and our menisci and all of those places, we are providing stiff support. 
So our hyaline cartilage was a little bit flexible. Think about the tips of your nose and your costal cartilages. They move a little bit, so that was providing flexible support. Our elastic cartilage was very bendy, and it could bend and then pop back into its original shape, so that was providing elastic support. And here in our fibrous cartilage, you can see it's really pretty dense, and our collagen fibers are very closely packed together. So we're providing very stiff support. And if you think about the discs in between your vertebrae, your intervertebral discs, when you bend your spine, you don't bend very much. So we get a little bit of movement, but not a lot of movement, and that's because our fibrous cartilage is pretty stiff, and it's resisting compression and not giving a whole lot. So not a lot of movement. Think about your pubic symphysis. Your pubic bones do not shift around when you're walking. They are going to stay fairly solidly together, and they only shift a little bit when you move from like a standing to a sitting position, or they relax with a hormone called relaxin when a female has to give birth. So there we go. We are providing stiff support. So here in our summary slide, we have all of that information and we zoomed in. So we can see our lacunae a little bit more clearly. And within our lacunae, we can see our chondrocytes. And they kind of appear as just a little dot. So they're not as googly as they are in our hyaline cartilage. And lastly, we can see our collagen fibers moving in different directions, sometimes swirling, but we can see individual fibers in between our lacunae. Here's a different picture of fibrous cartilage. Again, we can see our lacunae and our chondrocyte within our lacuna, so the space and then the cell, and then you can see your collagen fibers sort of being a little bit wavy, but they're moving in between your lacunae, sort of in all different directions. Again, I want to compare this to hyaline cartilage. In fibrous cartilage, you can see your fibers. Your fibers are very clear and they're moving in all different directions, sometimes even being a little bit swirly. So we can see that in both of our fibrous cartilage pictures. But in our hyaline cartilage, everything in between the lacunae is smudged so you can't see individual fibers, and instead you have that watercolor appearance to your cartilage. So that wraps it up for cartilage, and if you have any questions, never hesitate to contact your instructor.